Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. This is Bhupesh. Hope you are doing perfectly well. So today we'll be doing a different session all together. You know, a uh, lot of my students and a lot of my you know followers have asked since you have a lot of uh, Grafana knowledge over a past three four years. Why don't you create a uh, session on what are the important Grafana related observability related questions that are normally asked? in you know interviews so that we can get benefited right so today we're going to talk about all the important uh, grafana interview related questions in this session and i'll keep it short so that you know you're not waiting for those questions okay and i'll be giving certain documentation so that you can understand from where you can read those you know topics perfect so again, no theory, uh, quickly jumping onto the practical things, uh, quickly checking what are the questions that are really you will listen from interviewer on observability on full stack or SRE monitoring. A very basic question. What is Grafana? I think everybody is aware about it. Grafana is open source data visualization and monitoring platform tool. And this is just a light weight, just a visualization tool. It doesn't store any data. The data of metrics, logs and traces or applications of infrastructure is being stored in different different databases. So if anyone is asking you what is Grafana, Grafana is just a visualization tool and it is possible in different different flavors. It is possible in cloud, it is possible as open source and you can play around on any you know operating system or platform. Next question. What is Prometheus? Very interesting thing. Prometheus is a metrics open source based you know, querying database, which is now popularly being used with across so many you know, organization and, uh, you know, and it stores the time series database, time series data, meaning every instant of time, what is the value of your metric? So that is the reason Prometheus is very, very popular in a lot of companies and it goes hand in hand with the Fana in storing the matrices. Next question. What is Mimir? Any guesses? Well, Mimir is again open source, horizontally scalable time series database, especially used for uh, production scenarios when you want to install uh, because Prometheus is, is really not that scalable when you talk about production data and a lot of Big4 and other companies are using Mimir to store the production matrices and the back end of Mimir is either S3 or S3 on AWS cloud or you know, on, on Azure cloud. So basically you can store the data backend and you can you know access the data using Mimir, which works on a multi-threading approach. So Mimir is very, very good if you compare it with Prometheus. What next? What is Locky? Any guesses? Locky is simply a log aggregation, a database that is originally created by Grafana Labs. It is used to query your logs, application logs, infrastructure logs very effectively. And it is a cloud native uh, a thing also that can be installed in Kubernetes, not Kubernetes. There are other, uh, you know, tools for open source for logs. Uh, you know, I'm not discussing those things, but the you can use Elasticsearch and other tools. But Locky is really using, is being used by Grafana. It goes hand in hand with Grafana and other observability tools. Now, what is Promptail? Any idea? Okay, Promptail is an agent which is actually developed by Grafana Labs. So Locky was a database to for logs, but Promptail actually ships the logs from your client or from your you know application cluster to the you know Locky database. So it's it's actually a shipping agent, right? It's an agent which actually captures your data and then you can simply uh, do regex on your logs. You can remove something, you can add something, and then it's a log aggregation system, and then send it to Locky. Next question, what is a tempo? Again, a tempo is open source distributed tracing backend which stores your uh, the span and the traces of your application of your query and it goes again hand in hand with Grafana as an LGTM stack, uh, Locky, Grafana, Tempo and Mimir and you know, it stores all your application traces uh, of your, uh, you know, any application. Next question. <coughs> Excuse me. Next question is how to set up Grafana based observability in virtual machine. So you can set up Grafana based observability in virtual machine, you know, uh, using a certain set of steps that steps have been demonstrated in this uh, GitHub page. 
that I will be sharing into the description of this video. So quickly, let's see what is there in this uh, GitHub page. So I'm not spending too much time, but I will at least talk about a little bit. Right, Grafana on-prem. So what I'm doing, how to install Grafana on your virtual machine on on-prem, you need to install Prometheus. You need to install node exporter. I'll talk about node exporter as a infrastructure capturation infrastructure exporter. Then you need to install uh, configure uh, Prometheus to monitor client, then install Grafana, install Locky, install Promptail, and uh, add all these Prometheus and uh, Locky to your uh, Grafana as a data source. And then you can install the observability. You can install Tempo also. Tempo I missed. Okay, here. Fine. Moving on. Next question. How to set up Grafana based observability on Kubernetes? This is a very, very important and very likely to be asked question in an interview. And we need some smart answer. There are a couple of Helm charts available with, with which you can install Grafana based observability. The one which I like the most and the one which is being popularly used by so many folks across the globe is the Cube Prometheus spec, which I am talking about in greater detail in my this uh, you know separate video as well as in this documentation i'll be sharing that thing uh, so i'm talking about grafana yes right so you need to install this prometheus stack uh, onto your uh, kubernetes cluster you need to add this helm chart and simply go ahead and run this so what this stack will do this is install prometheus this will add Prometheus as a data source in Grafana. This is install a couple of two important exporters like node export for infrastructure data and cube state matrices for uh, capturing the container level uh, matrices. And then you get a lot of dashboards also inbuilt with this Helm chart. And not only dashboard, you get a lot of alerts based on alert manual alerting that I'll talk about in next set of questions. So this is a very, very popular Helm chart to set up your Grafana based observability on Kubernetes. Right. What is next question? Okay. What are the important exporters for infrastructure monitoring? I think you you know that uh, we have a node exporter which is we saw. There's a process exporter also which captures the important processes on your machine on your cluster. So you can install this. And there's another third one, the cube state matrices, which is actually uh, you know get all your container level data. Next question, what are the different ways to set up dashboards? So I have a very popular uh, you know, video on this. You can create panels from scratch, writing your own prompt QL queries and then modify and add coloring. And then you can import the dashboard from uh, dashboard.grafana.dashboard.com like or ready-made dashboards that are available on Google. And then you can import the JSON of any existing dashboard. I'll be putting a link how to do that in greater detail in the in, you know description of this video. Next, how can we set up alerts in Grafana? Any guesses? No? Okay, there are two ways. Normally, people do not know the alert manier based alerting. Alert manier is a way that you can set up alerts uh, within the Helm chart configuration and uh, and you can configure all those alerts with the help of, you know, the, uh, the Helm charts only with the help of values.ml file. But suppose if there's any alert which you did not configure it and you want to set it up right on the fly, then you can do Grafana based alerting which normally you write any prompt QL, set up a threshold and then fire an alert linking to a SMTP server. Why an SMTP server is needed? Because ultimately for firing an alert to your mailbox, your uh, you know simple mail transfer protocol should be set it up if you are using open source Grafana. For that, you can use uh, Gmail. I will post a link how to do SMTP uh, you know setup in the description. You can see that uh, video as well as the you know documentation. Next question, how can we set up in synthetic monitoring? Now there are two ways to synthetic to set up synthetic monitoring. If you're using open source Grafana, then there are so many things, but the bare minimum, the endpoint monitoring, HTTP, DNS, all those monitoring, you can use the black box exporter, definitely. And if you're using Grafana, Grafana Cloud, then you can use Grafana Cloud uh, SaaS portal for that. Next question. How can we set up real user monitoring? This is a really, really new and niche topic in Grafana. So there's a popular new open source tool called as Grafana Faro that is really you know, integrated with Grafana Cloud as well as you know open source Grafana. I have a very 
good video and a documentation on Grafana Faro. I'll be posting it so you can uh, see it and then you can answer your interview question accordingly. Next question. How can we create tickets in Jira or ServiceNow on the basis of alerts? So suppose you have an alert which is getting fired. Uh, suppose your CPU is more than 90% but you want to uh, not only create uh, send an email, you want to create a ticket directly. Then how to do that integration with Grafana? Again, simple. You should have a SMTP server. You should have a Jira alert framework, which I have talked about, which, you know, uh, the Prometheus community has already talked about. Integrate the alert with the Jira alert. And then if it is uh, going above threshold it for any, you know, SLI, it will uh, go uh, to, it will get a ticket directly. So I'll be posting uh, the documentation as a video, how to do the same thing. Next question. What are recording rules in Grafana? Any idea? Not so many people are aware about it. Recording rules are actually the repeated from QL queries that you normally run, right? And you suppose there's a query that you want to run after every four hours. So rather than running that query, you record a rule that recording is something like recording a macro in Excel, right? So you record that from QL query and then uh, you know record it every four hours and then store that data into the TSDB. Now, what is TSDB? That is the next question. What is TSDB? TSDB is a time series database and Prometheus is an example for that. InfluxDB is also an example of that. So, you know, these databases store the data into the time series format, meaning every instant of time that metric is being captured and then using certain queries, you can summarize uh, the metric to create a meaningful format. Next question. What is a PromQL? I think now everyone should be aware about it. PromQL is a uh, Prometheus uh, query language to understand the time series database and calculate the metric summary. Next question. How application monitoring can be done if your application is on Kubernetes using Grafana? Question. So this is a very niche topic. You can do the application monitoring using open telemetry auto instrumentation if you are not a hardcore developer. You can use the auto instrumentation method for these, these technologies like Java, .NET, Golang and Node.js. And if you have a Java background or technology background, then you can instrument your application to send the metrics, logs and traces to the uh, uh, Grafana monitoring server. Next question. What is Grafana agent and Grafana alloy? This is the, I think one of the important questions that everybody should understand when they are attending the SRE monitoring interview. Well, Grafana agent was the old agent which was managed by Grafana for so, so many years. But recently they have, you know, deprecated that agent and they have replaced it with Grafana alloy, which is open telemetry based collector that sends the data or collects the data from your client to monitoring server. Meaning, suppose you have an application running on one box, separate box, and you want to capture the metrics, logs and traces then you will install Grafana Alloy Agent on that box which will you know read everything and then it will send your data to monitoring box. Now this monitoring box can be anything. It can be your Kubernetes uh, based Grafana based solution. It can be a VM based Grafana based solution. It can be going to your Grafana Cloud uh, SaaS portal. It can be going to your Grafana Enterprise. So there are so many flavors of monitoring box. But here uh, for every monitoring alloy should be installed on that agent. Suppose this application is on virtual machine, then one alloy is enough for that virtual machine. If that application is on uh, Kubernetes cluster, then one alloy per cluster is enough to gather the data. I hope it answers the queries. That's it. That is the very quick and the brief, you know, interview questions that normally people get asked. Normally I ask to my, you know, juniors when they appear for an SRE interview. These are really, really normal questions. If you have any questions that are being left uh, by me, please note down in the comment section. I will try to help you and I will try to publish all the documentation related to these questions into the description section. Please do check out and last but not the least, do not forget to like and subscribe the channel so that you can get plenty of other videos related to Grafana and other observability and engineering framework. Thank you for now. Bye-bye.